Hey everyone, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pastor Tim Wright here coming to you from Peoria, Arizona, the campus of Community of Grace on this very special weekend. We're celebrating two things today. Uh, first of all, we're celebrating our 19th anniversary as a congregation. It was on March 27, 2005, Easter Sunday morning that we had our very first worship service. And not only is it our 19th anniversary, which we'll talk a little bit about more later in the service, but today is Palm Sunday, and we are getting ready for Easter week. Now, one of the most viewed, talked about, and controversial commercials from the big game last month was not about cars or snacks or beer or insurance. It was about Jesus. It was a one-minute spot that showed various vignettes of people washing the feet of others, a son washing the feet of his dad, a police officer washing the feet of an African-American man, a woman washing the feet of a young pregnant girl in front of a family planning clinic, and a pastor or a priest washing the feet of a transgendered person. And at the end of the commercial were these words. Jesus didn't teach hate, he washed feet. Now the controversy around this commercial came not from non-religious people who were angry that the big game was interrupted by a Christian commercial. It came from Christians who were outraged at the message of that commercial. So let me read for you a handful of posts, and these are from thousands and thousands of angry posts. Let me read just a few of them for you. People didn't yell to crucify Jesus because he was really nice, tolerant, non-judgmental, all-inclusive, and affirming. People yelled crucify because he claimed to be God and said that he was the only way, called out sin, and rejected what culture and religion had accepted. This ad was very misleading, but it, isn't it the norm of the day to twist the image of Jesus into this all-inclusive pal that doesn't mind our sin. He wants us to turn from our sins and to walk uprightly before Him. It's so many things people think that Jesus is okay with, but He's not. They present a squishy Jesus, not a biblical one. The same Jesus that said love one another also said go and sin no more. Why don't they use that as one of their pithy sayings? It's just another way to get Christians to join that evil, woke crap. Can, can you say crap at a church service? This commercial is so offensive to any Christian, they forget the line, go and sin no more. How can we keep our washed feet clean if we keep living in the mud? Stop showing this woke ad. We are called to expose evil, not wash their feet. Now, if these posts sound familiar to them, it's because, or familiar to you, it's because they echo the criticisms leveled against Jesus 2,000 years ago by the religious elite. Here's some of the things that were said about him. He takes in sinners and eats with them, treating them like old friends. If this man were really a prophet, he would know who this woman is and who is touching him. He would know what kind of sinful life she lives. How does he dare talk like this? This is blasphemy. God is the only one who can forgive sins. When John came, he fasted and drank no wine, and everyone said he has a demon in him. When the Son of Man came, he ate and drank, and everyone said, look at this man. He's a glutton and a wine drinker, a friend of tax collectors and other outcasts. Now, this outrage that was poured out at this commercial about Jesus washing feet is a powerful reminder for us of just how scandalous and reckless and subversive God's grace really is. We have a hard time taking in that grace unfiltered. We're afraid that if it's unfiltered, if it doesn't have boundaries around it, it becomes dangerous. It becomes explosive. And so we find ourselves having to put boundaries around it. Otherwise, this grace is for anyone. It's for everyone. And that can't be true. That can't be right. That can't be just, can it? And yet along comes the story of Easter. And it blows through all of those concerns 
with this good story about a good God who loves us even more than we can imagine. The story of Easter, which we're going to be celebrating now this week, starting with today, Palm Sunday, when Jesus rides into Jerusalem as a conquering hero, moving us to Thursday when Jesus washes the feet of his disciples and shares the Last Supper with them, moving to Friday when he's crucified on the cross, and then moving to Sunday when he rises from the dead. The story of Easter is the story of a good God who runs to us, not to condemn us, not to punish us, but to find us. And where he finds us is in the mud, in the messiness and the brokenness of life. And when he finds us there, this God, rather than demanding we get out of the mud and getting our act together, this God climbs into the mud with us. The story of Easter tells us that Jesus only washes dirty feet, that Jesus comes to rescue only muddied people. And the way that God does it in the person of Jesus is to climb into the mud with us. And gets dirty in the mud. And that's why this grace is so scandalous. Because God dirties himself in the messiness of life in order to rescue us. So to pick up on some of the criticisms I just read for you. What we hear or what we want to hear is go and sin no more. But we miss the promise that came before it. Neither do I condemn you. We hear, repent, and believe, but what we miss is the power for repentance. The Bible says it's your kindness, God. It's your grace that leads to repentance. We hear, confess, and be forgiven, but we forget that powerful moment on the cross when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, not because they've confessed, not because they've gone to sin no more, not because they climbed out of the mud, but because they don't know what they're doing. They're just lost. We hear the good news that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him might not perish but have everlasting life. That's great news, but it's even more scandalous in the next verse. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The story of Easter is the story of a God who runs to us with boundless, boundaryless love. A love for anyone and everyone. The Bible says that while we were still sinners, while we were still stuck in the mud, Christ died for us. And sure, there were political and there were religious reasons why those leaders got together and put Jesus to death. But ultimately, it was because Jesus was too tolerant, too loving, too gracious that he had to die. It's only muddied people that Jesus comes to save. And that includes all of us. Martin Luther, the leader of the Protestant Reformation once said, be aware of aspiring to such purity that you no longer wish to be looked upon as a sinner or to be one. For Christ dwells only in sinners. Christ dwells only in muddied people. Isn't that great news? The story of Easter is that Jesus comes to find us in the mud and the brokenness of life and joins us there. And it's there in the mud that Jesus begins to fill us with life, to fill us with grace and peace. And then he invites us, surprisingly, to enter back into the mud, to join with others in the mud, and to follow Jesus in washing their feet with grace. Jesus today comes to you in the mud of life to let you know that he loves you. Amen.
One of those scandalous, reckless ways that Jesus shows up in our lives to shower us in grace and in mercy is when Jesus invites us to come to his table. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, said, take, eat, this is my body, it is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God keeps breaking into our world through Jesus who joins us in the mess, who joins us in the mud and says, child, you are forgiven, you are loved, you have been set free. No matter what sins you've committed, you are mine, you are perfect, and I love you. And because of that, your sins are forgiven. And so now as you take that cracker, that piece of bread, know this, that that is the body of Christ and it's given for you. And as you drink that wine or that grape juice, that that is the blood of Christ and it is shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you in grace. Amen. Well, thank you again so much for joining us on this beautiful Palm Sunday, wherever it is that you are. I want to add my own welcome I am Pastor Josh Pontius, one of the other pastors serving you here at Community of Grace, and it has just been wonderful to have you. And if it is your first time here uh, joining us online, a special welcome and a special thanks to you. Uh, if you'd like, go ahead, text the word NEW to 623-295-2484. And we've got a special gift, no strings attached for you. It is a gift card to Starbucks. So caffeinate, fuel up, whatever it is you need from Starbucks, that gift 
is from us to you, no questions asked. Uh, we do love to pray for people, though, if you have something going on in your life or if you just want to have prayer for something that's going on into the world. Uh, our team here would love to pray for you. Just text the word prayer to 623-295-2484. And it is a big week. This week, Easter is coming. You'll hear a little bit more about that in a, in a little bit. Um, but there is a lot going on in the life of this congregation, in the life of this church. God is on the move here. So if you want to learn about all that is going on here, just text that word events to that same number, 623-295-2484. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, this is our 19th anniversary, and um, to be honest, we're, we're not doing a lot this year in terms of our 19th anniversary. We're going to put all of our energy into our 20th next year, uh, but it's still a significant milestone in the life of this congregation, and everything has been built around this call that we have sensed from the very beginning uh, that, yeah, we need to get together. It's important for us to worship, to grow in our faith, but for a reason. And that's to follow Jesus on the bold, reckless adventure, bringing grace to the world. And so every year during our uh, anniversary week, we do a Feed My Starving Children food pack. And uh, we're just wrapping that up so we don't have all the numbers yet. But it's going to be about 130,000 meals that we will have packed. And that will bring us pretty close to 2 million meals. We'll hit the 2 million mark next year for our 20th anniversary. And something that's just a, about a month older than our actual anniversary date is our relationship with our friends in Rwanda. And uh, four of us headed out to Rwanda in February of 2005, and we began a relationship with the Lutheran Church in Rwanda. And over the years, we've been able to do a number of really fantastic things together with our friends over there. Uh, we've helped build a medical clinic. We've uh, helped uh, with pastors and some of their salary issues. Uh, we've been able to uh, keep some churches open by helping them with some improvements. And um, last week, actually, two weeks ago, I guess, um, we were uh, in Rwanda, my daughter and I. It's really because of her that we got to Rwanda in the first place. And the church that we've been a partner with for 19 years, Niamata Lutheran Church, uh, they needed to rebuild their building from government edict because it wasn't up to code. We were able to help them out financially. And so Alicia and I were there for the big opening dedication. What a thrill it was uh, for us to be there and to represent you. And we were able to take some pictures. We were able to take a few videos. And uh, Diane and her team have been kind enough to put that together for you in a video. And we can experience together the good work that Community of Grace and Nehemiah Lutheran Church are doing. And so here's a little video of what we experienced two weeks ago.
almost impossible to describe to you the difference between the building that we first experienced back in 2005. We saw a couple pictures of it. Uh, the rain would come through the roof. The walls were small. And then the building that you just saw. And uh, this mission helped make that possible. And uh, so thank you to you for the good work that you're doing, not only locally, but all around the world. And that's a part of who we are. That's a part of what we celebrate together today on our 19th anniversary. And it happens because of the generosity of everybody who loves this mission and ministry. And when we use the word generosity, we're not talking about a certain amount of money. Some of us have a capacity to give larger gifts than others, but we all have the same capacity for generosity. And so whether it's a dollar or $10,000, every single gift that's given to this mission and ministry is doing something really significant every single day of the week here and around the world. And so for 19 years, you have been faithful in giving. For 19 years, we've been able to make a difference all around the world. And I encourage you to keep up the good work. We're just getting started. And so if you believe in this mission and ministry, we want to encourage you uh, to give today. You can text in a gift, 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484. In the message, you type in how much you'd like to give. You can hold up your camera with the, uh, and, um, on your phone to this QR code right here. That'll take you to some links. And you can fill that out. You can make a one-time gift. You can make a recurring gift. And there are a lot of other ways that you can give boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving, boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving. And uh, you can see things are happening here. And uh, if you want to be a part of that, uh, we'd love to have you join us in this mission of following Jesus on the bold, reckless adventure bringing grace to the world. And speaking of that, it is Easter week coming up. And we've got a couple things that we want you to be aware of. You can join us either online or in-house. Good Friday, we have a service where we're going to focus on the death of Jesus, His crucifixion. It'll be online at 6.30. It'll be in-house at 6.30. And then we've got a big Easter weekend. Uh, you can see the schedule there. Uh, the online service will be on Saturday at 4 o'clock. The on-campus events start at 2.30 on Saturday. Uh, we'll have our fam family block party, and then at 4 o'clock we'll have an Easter service on the campus. And then Sunday morning, uh, if you want to join us here, 7 a.m., free uh, pancake breakfast. And that's the only way we could get Pastor Josh here. Uh, and then uh, worship at 7.45, 9 o'clock, and 10.30. So four worship services, in-house, one online. Uh, you can go to boldrecklessgrace.org slash Easter. Please tell your friends about it. There are two times a year people are open to going to church. This is one of them. And so give them an invitation to join you online or here on the campus as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus together. And so now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you, be gracious to you. And may the Lord always turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go bold, live grace.
like ashes in the wind. So long to my old friend.